Well, the Attribute 4 event is wrapping up. There's only a couple days left at the time of me playing and recording this match, but I wanted to go over this one because it was quite interesting. Never played against Ultra Athletes before, uh, and this is a Diamond 3 opponent here. So I just wanted to show you how Salamangrate can function in the grind game, because when something does seem a little hopeless, one of the actual uh, nice features of Salamangrate is its resiliency. Um, when tier element goes away, you know, when Konami hits it on the ban list, this deck might actually be half decent again. Um, it's definitely more powerful going first than going second. But I think that if you did want to play this deck in the regular mode because you liked it or you learned it in the Attribute 4 event, it is something that you can try probably get to about platinum, mid platinum, maybe even the top of platinum, but it definitely won't probably won't get you through diamond unless you really, really learn the deck and play a lot of hand traps. So before we get started here, let's take a look at this opponent's board. Um, the ultra athlete monsters all kind of function off of returning themselves to hand to summon another one, and they have various effects. So this one, once during my turn, during the opponent's turn, uh, when any card effect is activated, they can discard a card, negate, and destroy the card. So that's bad. This one can... Um, once per turn during your opponent's turn, when I special summon a monster, they can change that battle position of the monster and negate its effect. So obviously this won't work against Link. And then this one is probably the most annoying one because it's the quick effect during my main phase. They can shuffle one level five or higher monster from their hand into the deck. And if they do, special summon another ultra athlete monster from the deck with a different name. So there's no like level restriction or anything. So they can bring out like the most powerful one and just like pop cards on my field, etc. Like the player manager or something. So this is actually kind of annoying to deal with, and the field spell has a bunch of effects uh, that they can trigger. But if you notice, all these cards say that they have to have stuff in their hands in order to resolve their effects. And so this match right away tells me that it's going to be a grind game. So I normal summon the Foxy, and they, they have a max C, so I'm like, okay, let me try ashing it, see if that goes through. They have the called by, so unfortunate, and I'm going to try to call by they're called by and the reason i'm doing this is because i actually want to fish this out because this has a negate and they have one card left in hand so it's going to fish out that negate and that's fine perfect i got them off of all their cards in their hand <clears throat> so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab gazelle off of the great uh, or sorry salamai great circle and the reason is because i'm just going to set these three cards and the plan is that during my opponent's turn, I'll activate Rage, Sack the Foxy, Special Summon Gazelle, and have Gazelle sell, send something to the graveyard because these cards all work during my turn, not during the opponent's turn. So I can resolve effects during the opponent's turn uninterrupted. So I'm not going to let them draw off Maxi because again, this, as you just saw, this deck functions off of having extra cards in the hand. So I want to keep them on as little resource in the hand as possible. The unfortunate thing is that they do draw into a, another card so they can recycle. So that's actually really strong because then they can just normal summon this one back and then off the normal summon they can search for another one off of the field spell uh so they bring out this one which destroys a card on the field when it inflicts damage and it has piercing battle damage so not a good look for me right now um i'm gonna go ahead and activate rage send the foxy and destroy the one that negates it doesn't really matter though because again they have the card that will during my turn take this card put it back into the deck and bring that same card out to negate during my turn but the pro the issue is though right they won't have a card in hand afterwards if they bring this out so that this won't actually be live so they might opt to bring player manager to pop a card so during our turn you can see here we special summon the gazelle because foxy was sent to the graveyard we send spinny for follow-up play next turn we're going to activate imperm so that they won't destroy a card on the field it was you know this is kind of irrelevant um i guess it's also saving me from 1500 points of damage but like this card's gonna get activated anyway so whether they pop this or they pop the imperm it probably didn't matter um but if they like the thinking is like if they ended up choosing imperm there's nothing here that i'm gonna really imperm right like i'm not gonna imperm this or this so i might as well just save the damage and prevent them from destroying the imperm and getting no value from it right so they do bring back out the card that can uh alter the special summon battle position and negate the effects during the end phase activate circle grab another gazelle okay a couple of lines here and it can be a little difficult sometimes for you to like try to think through like what is the correct line for salamangrate so i got a foxy in the graveyard and i have two salamangrate cards in hand i can use the foxy because they have a field spell up even though i don't have mine now if you're smart and you know 
the Foxy effect, when it comes back to the field, will pop the field spell. You may think, okay, well, they'll just negate it with the block backer because they can change the battle position of that Foxy and negate its effect. No, because the effect is resolving in the graveyard. So even if they change that Foxy to attack mode, if I brought it out in defense, the effect from the graveyard to destroy the face-up field spell will actually still resolve. By sending the Falco to the graveyard, it will trigger Falco effect. I can reset rage or I can, res or I can uh, set circle. And then because Falco goes to the grave, it'll trigger Gazelle. So I actually opt to normal summon Gazelle and dump a Jack. And I probably do that to try to fish out the opponent's cards here. And sure enough, they do use the uh, Spiker. Return the monster, bring out Player Manager because they have no cards in hand. Player Manager is just straight up when it's special summoned. They can target a, a card on the field and destroy it or negate all face-up monsters on the, on the field until the end of the turn, except they're Ultra Athlete monsters. So pretty, pretty good card. Um, so they're just going to pop this thinking that they put me on nothing uh, because obviously I need to link climb with, with Salamangrate, right? And I need Salamangrates on the field in order to activate my effects. So they end up returning the level 4 to hand, destroying my card, boosting their monsters with field spell. Again, this looks pretty hopeless, right? Um, but pay attention and you'll maybe learn something from this match. So you can see here, you know, we're going through the plays that we just said now. So we're going to bring back Foxy, discard the Falco. Falco, bring back the Rage. Now we've got Foxy. And we've got Rage. Now, why is this important? Because I also have Spinny in Grave, which is now live, that I dumped during my opponent's turn, and I have a Foxy on the field, so I can bring the Spinny back. This card doesn't really do anything. If this card attacks, your opponent can't activate card effects, so it doesn't matter right now. This card is the one that negates the attack position monsters. So what does that tell me? It's not going to negate links. I don't want to go for the Xyz play. So if I bring back Spinny here, and I go into the Mirage Stalio, they're just going to change the attack position or yeah, change it to either attack or defense and then just negate the effect. And then it's going to get destroyed next turn. So what I'm actually going to do is use Foxy to go into Baylinx, right? Because they can't change it to the position to defense and negate the effect. Activate Field Spell. Lose my, my Spinny, unfortunately, but that's fine. Bring out Sunlight Wolf. Okay, Sunlight Wolf effect. Bring out the Circle. Now, because I dumped Jack as well, when I summoned Gazelle at the start of my turn, of, of this turn here, I'm gonna now use. I'm gonna now use uh, Jack, bring it back, and then use um, Sunlight Wolf to bring back Gazelle. Okay, so this may look pretty weak, but this remember this is off of like we were sitting on one Foxy and we got all this out of it, right? Bringing it back with the Falco because of the resources we dumped into the graveyard. So the plan here is to use this card to pop two cards on their field and then use Baylinx to banish and save this card from getting destroyed. Like I have low life, so I actually have to worry about getting attacked for over for game. Um, but it depends on what the opponent's gonna draw here. So let's see what happens. So they draw, we got the field spell out of the way, which is good. They're gonna return player manager and then bring out the level five. So they top deck this card, which is terrible for me. This is like, this is the Omni negate during my turn. And then they're able to bring back out player manager, which is gonna pop, force me to pop this. So this is a really bad look. When they do this, I have to use it to pop. I think I pop this card and this card here. And I'll explain why in a second. Let's see. Oh, that's interesting. Why didn't I pop this? So I, maybe I opted to pop this one because of the damage that it was going to do to me, I guess. Yes, because my thinking here, let's see. They still have their normal summon. Player manager uses its effect, okay? This thing can only beat over Jack Jaguar right now. And if they opt to no use their normal summon to bring their monster back to the field, this won't be live during my turn. If they opt to keep this in their hand and they attack with player manager into Sunlight Wolf, I banish Baylinx and save Sunlight Wolf. They have no follow-up for next turn except for negating by dis by discarding this card. So this can beat over the Jack, that's fine. This can attempt to beat over Sunlight Wolf, but it won't actually beat over it um, because of Baylinx. So what are they going to do? Are they going to opt to try to keep this in their hand to negate next turn with the ace? Or are they going to summon it and try to beat over? Because I think it has 1800 attack. They're going to try to suicide into Baylinx. So I have to banish the... Or sorry, <laughs> suicide into Sunlight Wolf. So I have to banish the Baylinx. And then beat over it with player manager so it's actually destroyed. And then attack into this. Um, so it clears my board. All three of their monsters are on their field. But they have zero follow-up. Because they have nothing in their hand to discard off of perfect ace to negate and they won't have anything in their hand to shuffle back to special summon a monster off of the level four here which means next turn i draw 
I have Circle and I have Gazelle. I can pretty much re redo full extension because I put back a Sunlight Wolf into my extra deck. I have two in my extra deck still. And all it takes is me getting one on the field and all of my cards are live again, right? The uh, Foxy could be live. The Falco could be live to return a monster and special summon itself. As soon as I link off, the Jack Jaguar back in the graveyard will be live. So I'll have a lot of play. So they do opt to summon and you can see there that it does have 1800 attack. So that, that was a, a line that they could have gone for. And they, they actually opt to go for the BLS. Now this thing was summoned with a level seven or higher monster because the player manager was level eight. So it does have the ability, so it cannot be destroyed by card effects and um, it can't be targeted. So the effect, you know, one of the three effects triggers when this card destroys a monster by battle. So again, they're only gonna get one attack if they attack Jack or Sunlight Wolf, I save it from being destroyed by battle with the Bailing. So this card will not trigger to banish a card, gain attack, or do whatever. Um, but it is untargetable, so how am I going to beat it, right? Let's find out. So they do do the 1,200 points of damage. I banish the Bailing so that the BLS doesn't trigger and I keep my Sunlight Wolf on field. And look at look at the change in resource game here. Look at the resiliency of Salamangri and the, and the grind game. So we draw Ash. Not really useful right now, but again, the, we're not going to OTK the opponent because we just have to deal with this card. There's no graveyard effects we have to worry about with these cards either. Um, but off of Circle, we bring Foul. Now this is important because I'm going to clear up the Link Zone here, bring back Falco, and then Special Summon Foul. Um, normal Summon the Jack. Now again, there's a number of different lines you can do here, but I'm actually going to opt to go into a Dugaris. And then, yeah, this was maybe a mistake. Activate Sunlight Wolf to bring back the Rage. I probably should have just activated this to boost Sunlight Wolf, summon Gazelle, bring back, uh, dump Counter Trap, and then bring back Counter Trap because that guarantees me win next turn, right? Because no matter what they draw, I just Counter Trap it. Um, so that was a bit of a misplay. But you can see here we double the attack, so now we have enough to beat over BLS because that's the only way we can get it off field. It can't be targeted, it can't be destroyed by card effects. So we can't target spin it back. We can't, uh, um, like, what's a destruction effect? Uh, Salaman, Salaman Great Rage, if, you know, destroy it. So we have to beat over it. And Dugaris will accomplish that. Yes, we'll lose our battle phase next turn, but um, we'll be we'll be set up perfectly, right? Because like I said, if I would have bought Counter Trap, I would have been in a better position here. But the opponent kind of understands, sees the writing on the wall, and just gives up. But yeah, our extension was going to be summon, uh, summon out. Gazelle, because I think the scar, I think uh, detaching the materials would trigger Gazelle, and um, yeah, just beat over the opponent, set up a negate for next turn, uh, because I do have the rage and I do have Ash Blossom, so that's it's pretty good coverage regardless, and um, yeah, pretty much just set, set set myself up to win out in the grind game again. So that is the resiliency of Salamangrate. Uh, hopefully, you learned something from this match. Let me know in the comment section below. That's gonna wrap it up for the video, though, guys. Thank you if you made it this far. Quantum is out.